Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Blanchard. We are so glad that you are here today to worship with us. It's going to be a great day. If you are a guest, we are so glad that you are here. And Would you please do us a favor? In the pew in front of you, there's this guest card. On the front has a QR code that you can scan with your camera on your phone. If you would rather, on the back, you can just fill out the information. Please bring it to our welcome desk and we have a gift we would love to give you. We know the Lord's going to move awesome this morning and just can't wait to see what he does. So welcome to First Baptist Blanchard. Well, good morning, church. So good to see you this morning. We have a quick announcement from Miss Penny. So here you go. Thank you. Okay, ladies, we have a special event coming up for our women's gathering. Sorry. Is it on? Yes, you just keep it up, please. Oh, okay. Is that better? Okay. All right. Um, our women's ministry Christmas painting party will be Monday, December the 5th at 6 30. Uh, you have to sign up. I have a sign-up sheet right here. It's $10, and it's got the pictures on there of the uh, what you want to paint. There's a Christmas tree, a Santa Claus, the truck. Uh, then there's two round ones that say Merry Christmas, and one says, Baby, it's cold outside. <laughs> so um, we look forward to seeing all of y'all there. We're going to have a great time. We always do, just gathering together praising the Lord and thanking him for all that he has done for us and lets us do. So thank you. We'll see you then. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just out of stone here today. All right, thank you. All right, let's stand together this morning. Let's worship the Lord. Let's sing together. He has, he has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things for we dance in your freedom. Awake and alive, oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name. Church singing out hallelujah and a hallelujah God above it all hallelujah God he's unshakable hallelujah you have done great things yeah you've done great things oh hero of heaven 
You conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom. Awake in the light. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great.
we're prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. And here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Oh, come thou found, come thou King, oh, our testimony. And I was lost in utter darkness till you came and rescued me. I was bound by all my sin when your love came and set me free. But now my soul going to sing a song that is straight from scripture, Psalm 100. So listen as the choir sings.
that's straight scripture. So we lift his name. We bless his name to lift holy hands to the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask our men to come forward and take up our, our, take up our morning offering. Again, if you are a guest, this is not for you. We want, we're just glad you're here, glad you're a part of the service. Uh, for us, First Baptist family, this is a time for you to be obedient unto the Lord and give back to the Lord. And uh, So let's pray, and then we'll take up our offering. Father, we thank you again for this day. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit in this place. Father, would you just move on our hearts? Would you convict us of things we need to get right with? But, Father, would you burn in our hearts? Uh, Father, just what you want to do in this place. Would you help us just to follow you, to be obedient to you? And, Father, we love you. Thank you for this offering. And, Father, thank you for your word uh, that just speaks so loudly to us. Father, we love you. In Jesus' name. Stand with us, let's sing this together.
that this morning, that Father, you are holy, holy, holy. Father, I thank you for the power that saves, Father, your blood that was spilled for us, that, Father, we can be one day in your presence just singing holy, holy, holy at your feet. Father, we love you this morning. Thank you so much for just who you are, what you've done for us. And, Father, may we continue just to lift our eyes to you, to point to you, and that, Father, we'll see you do what only you can do. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. You may be seated. So I'm going to let you sit down just for a minute. Hey, Brother Ronnie, don't get too far on me. Don't, don't get too far on me. Keep a, keep a hot mic there. I don't know. I was just sitting over there, and I said, you know, the Lord just kind of pressed on my heart something and just want to share it. Um, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, this season, where we're headed, you know, a lot of people can be going through a lot of things that I don't know about, you don't know about reports that you don't know about things that might have happened in your life but you know what we can still give thanks and so this morning i just ask this um i just want to have a time of prayer if you feel like moving towards the altar like you feel like look i want to lay something down on this altar today maybe you got hurts in your heart maybe you have things that's going on in your life i, I don't know Whatever it is, but I'm going to tell you this, we want to pray for you this morning. So let's do this. Let's stand. It's easier to move when we're standing. If God has something on your heart and you want to just lay it down right here, hey, there, there's people that's lost loved ones in this last little season of time, right? How about this? How about if they come forward and we lay some hands on them and pray over this season? Because it's going to be a tough season. I mean, this is just recent right the, the people have lost a loved one you might want to just grab them by the hand and walk them down here to the altar too but ronnie's gonna pray i'm not even gonna pray i I'm, I'm, I've, I've been around this dude i love this guy I've, I've i've prayed with this guy i know what his heart is so let's do this this morning let's get out of our comfort zone what we normally feel comfortable about sticking and staying somewhere and let's start moving towards the altar all right, that means take a step this way, this way, this way. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Well, let's huddle up around some of these folks. And I tell you what, Brother Ronnie, before you pray out loud, how about we do this? This is what I used to call this. and it came, I didn't start it. It came from a friend of mine that, that had a church, and, and he was doing it. It's called a holy rumble. So that just means you can pray out loud right where you are and when, when the rumble gets a little bit lower because you know what holy 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 i love that song because i believe that one day we're going to be singing that with the angels we're going to be standing around with the lord and we're going to be going he is so holy he is so righteous he is so good so anyway i'm going to start praying you start praying i'm going to mute this because i don't want to be praying out loud but let's just have a holy lifting of our voice this morning Thanksgiving, repentance, whatever it is God puts on your heart, you
Father God, before Ronnie prays, I just want to pray for our youth. Lord, I know they're going to be traveling here in a few minutes. They're going to go to the Youth Evangelism Conference. So, Lord, we know and understand one thing, that you're going to be high and lifted up. Your word says that when you're high and lifted up, you'll draw men to yourself. God, I pray you so challenge our youth, God. So speak into them. When they come back, Lord, we as others that will be around them will sense and feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit radiating off of them. Because you tell us in your word that we're to be salt and light. People will know us because of our fruit. They'll know us by what's inside of us. And so, Father, I pray that that passion just rolls out of them. Lord, I pray that um, you you just speak to them mightily. Lord, use those speakers that speak. Lord, just pour out of them into our youth, and not just our youth, but God, last year there were some 7,000 youth there that were lifting their voice, they were lifting their heart, and I think it was 700 plus got saved, 700 plus gave their heart and life to Christ, many countless others had their faith re-energized, and it was just fired back up, so God, we thank you for that. Lord, I join these around the altar. Lord, there's many facets of things that's going on, health reports, Lord, uh, loss of loved ones right here in this tender time of Thanksgiving and and, and celebratory times. And so, Father, I pray for them. Lord, I I don't know every need, but God, I, I know one thing you do. And you're a holy, righteous God. You long to hear the prayers and the petitions of your people. So, God, we thank you for it. Lord, we love you. Go ahead, Brother Ron. Father, we just uh, praise you this morning, God. You, you tell us to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Father, I pray that, Lord, that this offering of thanksgiving, Lord, that we've offered up to you this morning, Lord, is pleasing to your, to your ears and to your heart, God. Uh, Lord, uh, Lord, we just want to enter into your presence, God. Uh, Lord, we pray that you just do a work here today, God, that, uh, Lord, we'd see you move, and that you'd just be magnified, God, that we'd see your glory in this place. God, we just lift up those in our congregation here this morning, Father, that are, uh, Lord, that are hurting, Lord, uh, struggling, Lord. I lift up uh, these, these precious br- brothers and sisters that have lost loved ones here recently, God. I pray, God, that you'd draw near to them, Lord, and comfort them, God. And Lord, you be the lifter of their heads, God. And Lord, we thank you for for their lives, God, and their testimony. Father, I I want to lift up marriages here today, God, for um, uh, Lord, uh, that's, that, that may be struggling, God. I pray, God, that you would Lord, that you would uh, bind them, Lord, just bind the enemy, God. I pray that you'd take away pride or anything in their lives, God, that would keep them, Lord, from having that marriage that you called them to have, God. Uh, I pray, Lord, for uh, our youth here today, God, as my brother prayed, God. We just thank you, Lord, for how you, you work in their lives, God. You says that out of the mouth of babes is ordained strength. So, God, we we just look forward to a word that we hear from them as they come back. God, do a work in their lives. God, do a work in our lives. God, we don't want to be where we're at. We just want to be with you and move ahead and and just see you do great and mighty things in our midst. So, God, just move us out of the way, Lord. Father, I pray even now, God, as my brother's prepared, God, I pray that you'd speak as you've spoken to him. I pray that you'd speak through him and speak to us. That, Lord, when we leave here, God, we'll be better than when we came. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, if we say we believe in it, we ought to be doing it, right? We, I, I believe that prayer has power. I believe prayer can change people's hearts. I believe prayer can change people's lives. I believe in prayer. And so as we look today, that's kind of where this message will go. We're in the final look at I Will. It's a series, it's a book, Tom Rainer wrote it, and um, I just wanted us to be a church that we just say, I will. Whatever's going, I will. If the Holy Spirit of God's prompting you, just say, I will. If there's something going on in your life, you just say, I will. 
and he gave those nine attributes. He gave those nine things. It's talking about this. I will move from I am, you know, yeah, I'll get around to that. I, I may get to it. I, you know, I'll procrastinate. I, I'll put a this. I'll put a, I'll put a that. But move to a point of where we say, I will. That, that's where I believe that the Lord is leading us and, and what he's wanting us to say. He's wanting to look into our lives and challenge us. And then we get to the point where we just say, you know what? I'll serve. Not in a begrudging manner or, or a place and just say, well, if they won't do it, then I'll do it. No, 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 no. What I mean is you get in prayer because that's what we're talking about, prayer. You get in prayer and you seek the Lord and you say, Lord, where do you want to use me? at this place at, at, at 201 Attaway? Where do you want me to use me for your name's sake and for your glory, not mine? I don't want to be high and lifted up in any of this. I just want to serve where you want me to serve because in your word, that's what you call us to do is to serve. And so God, show me. Lead me, guide me. And, and then it's kind of like those steps this morning. You get to the point where you say, I will go. I will. I will go. Lord, you lead me, I'll go. Look at all great movements in the Word of God and in, in other areas. God puts something on their heart, and they don't go procrastinating. They just start going. God's leading, they just go. They go with God. I will give generously. I, I, I didn't pull that out of the, the book because I did four or five weeks of being generous and how to give, but that's still in this DNA of this message. I will be generous. I will. I'll be generous. And then through all this challenging and all this looking into the Word of God, you just finally say this, hey, look, I know things are going to come up in my life. I, I actually got to speak to a gentleman this week, and he said, um, you know what? Six years ago, I used to go to that church... First Baptist, all the time. I was there every Sunday. I came every Sunday morning. I, I was a faithful Sunday morning. I came all the time. And then all of a sudden, I had a child come into my life with me and my wife. We, 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 you know, we had a baby and everything. And then you know what? We just slowly and easily, life got busy, right? Life gets hectic, right? Taking care of things, things that are going on. But see, we need to change that mindset to say, I just will. I will not be a church dropout, no matter what circumstance, what trial, whatever happens in this life, I will not drop out. I'll stay faithful. And then I, I threw an audible in there, didn't even pull anything out of the book. It was just, Lord put a message on my heart, I will be thankful. We ought to be thankful people, Amen. Because we just sang about it. Who was and is to come. God, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And one day, Jesus will return. And you know what? We ought to be thankful for that. I'm thankful that he saved me. I'm thankful. And I, I'm, I'm still, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to say this all the time. I'm not still far removed from the time where he spoke to me and, and revealed to me that how I was lost and that how I needed to be saved. I ain't got over it, and I don't plan on any time soon getting over it. And you know what's Craig? I don't get over going to tell people about what my Jesus has done for me and what he's doing. And so I'll be thankful for what he's doing. And then today, I want us to look at this one. And, and it's going to interchange and be intertwinable because I'm going to use the word prayer, and you're going to think that's what I'm talking about. But it's this one. I will make a difference. So, to, so today, see, I, I want you to say and, and, and think in your heart and, and make a commitment to the Lord and say, I will make a difference. Because every one of us ought to be a difference maker. Why? Because it says in the Word of God that we are salt and that we are light. And those two components make a difference. Amen or oh me? I'm going to tell you right now, when it's dark and gloomy outside, I kind of want to get down and kind of get, you know, bob in about it a little bit. That's just a French term. I come from Marksville, and we use that term bob in. That just means you poke out your lip and you pout. So a lot of times when the sun's not out, I pout. But man, when the sun's out and things are good, man, I'm joyous. Same thing. We can make a difference because Jesus lives in us. We can speak through that. So if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. We're going to look at 
I notice my rubric has left the communion table, and that's okay. I'll give it to you. Because, see, we have a measuring stick. We have a measuring stick. Where'd it go? That's okay. I don't need it. Here's the rubric that you can hold on to, or your measuring stick, or your, 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 how you measure and guide what's going on. Do I benefit others? You, when you weigh things that you're doing and what's going on in your life, do I benefit others? And do I tell others about Jesus? And do I serve in the local church? Those are, the, those are our rubrics of how we're growing and how we're transforming and why we're, we're changing in this life. So here's like the message if you want to look at it. I will make a difference. And if that's the truth, if I will, and if I do this, what will make a difference? Prayer must be a priority. Amen? If, I'm, if, if, if the Holy Spirit of God and, and I'm going to make a difference and He's going to speak and use me, then you know what? We better be on our knees. We have to be asking Him, God, transform me. Lord, change me. Speak, move into my life. Here, here's the neatest thing. I, 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 I looked at this this week as, as I was reading about where to go and what I was going to preach. and I thought about a couple other passages and other places, but about Thursday morning, kind of landed and nailed down right here at First Chronicles 4. Because it's in like a weird place, Brother Ronnie. It's kind of strange. Y'all read the Bible pretty often? I, that's about how many I thought. But, but here, here's what it says. I mean, when, when you're looking all through Chronicles, First Chronicles, like this chronological thing that's happening here, you're seeing lives and, and different folks and all the things that are happening, all this genealogy. Who likes reading genealogy? Good, I'm the only one. A few of y'all, man, it's tough reading genealogy. Names are hard. The whole thing's tough. But, but, but all in the midst of this genealogy and, and, and all the things that are happening right here, there's a small two-sentence story. Let's stand and read it together. First Chronicles 4, 1 through 9. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you may bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that, you're, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Father God, let that be the desire of our heart. Speak to us today. Let it be abundantly clear what you're saying to us and then god let us live it out in jesus name amen see i want us to look at, at an example of, of prayer and how it made a difference in somebody's life prayer made a difference in my life my mom praying for me my dad praying my grandmother my grandfather there's people that were praying for me to be saved how about you we remember those folks, and this is a, just another example of here how prayer makes a difference. You know, it's not like any other story in the Old Testament, is it? Usually, Old Testament stories take up chapter upon chapter upon chapter, and you, you bog down in it, you read for a while, and you just kind of get, you lose space. But two sentences? It's pretty good what, what, what's in here, and there's a lot of power and a lot of meat that we're going to look through and see. You ever read over this story? Like if you're doing a chronological Bible read, you're, you're doing a one-year Bible read, and you're just reading and reading and reading. You, you might have just passed over it, Miss, Miss Patty. And, and you know why? Because like I said, it was all that chronological and, and all the things that were happening. That genealogy is tough. Adam to Seth. You, you remember that when you get into Genesis? And you're reading what happens from Adam to Seth and, and the different ones. Well, Chronicles gives you the same basic uh, uh, genealogy what's going on Ishmael you hear about his life what's happening then Isaac and Seir and then the kings and then Caleb and then King David you get to hear I always love stories about King David King David man I, I cannot wait to get to, to heaven me and, me, and, me and brother David have a discussion I, I want him to just fill me in on everything that he did in his life that's why when I went to Israel and we got to go and tour the city of David I was just eating it up 
just looking and seeing and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, and then, then there's the story of Solomon. If you want to look, just, just go back. Homework today, go back in Chronicles 1, 2, 3, 4, and look at all those different things, what was going on. The family of Judah is in chapter 4. Jabez, more honorable than his brothers. The word and the wording inside here would suggest that, that he is talking about his Brothers, It's a literal term. It's not a figurative like where I call you Brother Ronnie or Brother such and such like this. He's talking about his family. only reason I can understand that, Brother Shannon, is because there's talking about genealogy. And so if you're talking about genealogy, you must be talking about your brothers and, and who he's talking about. So in his house, he's the most honorable one. Hey, can I ask you a question? If we're doing your genealogy and I get to go into your house and, and, and interview your mom and dad and your, your brothers and your sister and your, your aunt and uncle and, and man, we just had this big Thanksgiving gathering and I got to plop down right in the middle of your family and I'd say, hey, Nana, tell me about Annalise. See, I ain't gonna embarrass any, anybody else. I embarrass my daughter. Tell me about Annalise. What, hey, listen. See, the word of God is to quicken us, Right? It's to bring us to repentance and confession. It's to examine the, the places in our hearts. So let me just ask you. You ask the Lord. You talk this thing out. Would that be said of you if you were sitting down at the dinner table at Thanksgiving and you were looking at the rest of the mugs sitting at the table? Am I more honorable? That's what was said about Jabez. There must be something different about him. You know what I believe it is? He was a man of prayer. He was a man of prayer. He was seeking the Lord. He was, he was led by his leadership. He was, he was speaking and talking to God. Honorable in God's... See, you might miss that. He was honorable in God's eyes. You know, it's good to be honorable in man's eyes, but I'm going to tell you right now, I like a lot of y'all in this room, but I'm going to tell you right now, I give more concern over what he thinks than what you think all day and twice on Sunday so he's honorable in God's eyes spirit led lives or spirit led living in the, you strive to receive God's highest reward don't you if you're spirit led and you're, you're moving and dwelling speaking engulfed with the Holy Spirit you, that's what you, you're looking for you're wanting a reward from your heavenly father right well, this is what Philippians, this is what Paul says in Philippians 3, 12, and 14. Not that I have already obtained it. I, I haven't attained everything. Or am I already perfected, but I press on. See, I'm not perfect. See, a lot of us want to do that. We want to measure stick. We want to rubric other people around us. And you know what? They ain't arrived either. But you know what? He, he, we, we still press on. And that's what he's saying right here, that I may hold on to that which Christ Jesus has laid aside, laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Here's what Paul's saying. Hey, I ain't there yet. I don't have it all figured out. I've not arrived. But this one thing I do know, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things that are ahead. That's saying this, I ain't looking in the rearview mirror, I'm looking in the, in the front, big old windshield, and I'm going with God. And he's saying, I'm not doing that. He says, I press towards the goal for the prize of the upper call to God in Christ Jesus. Paul's giving us imagery I love imagery in the Bible because I'm a visual learner. I learn by things that I see, by things that I touch, things that I taste, and things that I'm around. And he gives us this, this imagery of a runner, Brother Shannon. Somebody, that, you ever run track? You, you did track? Man, I couldn't do track. I, I, I just couldn't do track. But he's giving it to us. Anybody in here ran track? Have you ever watched the Olympics? Have you ever watched a track meet, period? Okay, good deal. What do you normally see? Yeah, I got to come out of this coat. I started out freezing. Did y'all? Man, I came in here, I, I shook some hands and, and did some things and, and loved on some people, and my hands were like ice, but I'm, I'm good now. I'm amped up. So here, picture it. Here's, here's the, here, I, I usually go to this. I don't know why I lean, I, I lean heavy left, but we'll put it out here, okay? Y'all take the tape. Annalise has the tape in this hand. Joshua has it in this hand. And 
Shannon, we're getting it. I'm looking behind me because that's where you're at. And man, I'm digging it, and I'm digging it, and I'm digging it, and I'm digging it because I'm running my race. And then what do you usually do, brother Shannon? You do this, don't you? That's what he's saying right here. I press towards the goal for the prize. Let me ask you this morning. Are you doing this in your walk with the Lord? Are you pressing forward? Are you leaning in? And you're saying, I want to finish this race well. I want to run with endurance. It's what Paul's telling us. I want to go to the finish line, and I want to be in first place. It's the honorable life. That's how we are to do honorable in prayer honorable to achieve then think back about paul though the things that he had done the things that had happened and you think things are bad in your life the dude had been shipwrecked let gonna die out on the sea beaten with rods persecuted beyond all persecution and he's saying hey i want to be first who i don't know about you i ain't rushing to go get a beating I got plenty of them from my youth till about 20. But he's saying, I just press forward. I want to run this race with endurance. You know how I believe he did it? I believe he did it with prayer. One more lash. Lord Jesus, that one's for you. Lord Jesus, I think I'm going to drown out here, but I know you have a purpose and a plan. You know why? Because there's a declaration in your word. There's a promise that I'm going to stand on. And I'm, when I'm shipwrecked and when I'm going through trouble, when I'm going through this, I'm going to stand on a declaration from God, not from man. Whatever I'm going through, that's a prayer life, man. I'm going to tell you right now. You're, you're going through junk? You going through some junk today? I've heard some of y'all are going through some, some severe trials and, and it's just one more time you just got to breathe because you feel like you're going to drown. You, you feel like you're just overwhelmed. Here's good news. His name is Jesus. He is the author. That means he wrote your story and he is the finisher of your faith. Isn't it cool that I, I'm not the one that's responsible for my faith? He's got it in the palm of his hand. You know what I love? I love Scripture. If you dig in it and you read it and you examine it, it says that my name is written in his hand. And your name is too if you've trusted in Jesus for your, your uh, salvation. Got to keep moving. Right, let me ask you something. Are you the good kid when you go back to Thanksgiving? Like when you're sitting around the table and you, you got black sheep, right? You got black sheep. I, I, got bl I, I got black sheep. I'm not the black sheep, by the way. I talk like I was the black sheep. I, I, I'm really not as bad as I seem a lot of times. I was really the good kid. But he was the good kid. He was more honorable. But you got to look a little bit further into this. Mom named him. See, back in the biblical days, your name meant something. His name was this, because I bore him in pain. I don't know about y'all. I'm a man. I never birthed one. Thank you, Lord Jesus. She birthed all three of them. We had some mules, too. Man, Jordan was eight something. I used to know how much all they weighed. My mind's not on that right now. But here, I want you to focus on this. There must have been something different in this one because it caused pain where are you at this morning is there something that birthed pain into your life and that's what you're known for I really want you to think through that because see a lot of us go through pain we go through trials we go through all this and you know how we get through them P R A Y prayer pray spend time with the Lord so now we're going to get to the first point. Wow. I'm going to speed it up really quick, though. I want you to see this. Jabez knew the right person to call on in prayer. Amen? Jabez called on the God of Israel. The word called, I, I looked over it, studied a little bit, is to cry. You ever been in a time where you've cried out to God? 
whether humbled, prayer, hurt, broke, whatever, salvation. Man, I remember salvation prayer. Dude didn't have to pray a prayer for me because I knew all the things that I had done because the Holy Spirit of God revealed every one of them to me. I didn't need somebody whispering a prayer in my ear and then repeat after me. I said, Father, God, I have sinned, as David said, and I sinned against you alone. And I shared that prayer and called out to him an utter loud sound. You ever been there? Where you don't know what else to do. You just cry out in a holy rumble to the Lord. And then another word is to proclaim. You're proclaiming what it is that you need and what's going on. Jabez called out to the God of Israel. It also means to summons. It means to invite. Genesis 1.5 says this, And God called the, the light day. See, God spoke everything into existence. I don't care what they tell you in public school, private school, in school, out of school, wherever you're at. I'm going to tell you right now, God made everything. He spoke it into being, and he called. He says, and God called light day. In darkness, he called night. In evening and morning, that was the first day. So if that's what you're wondering, who made it? God did. All that in a day he's powerful amen so genesis 2 19 and out of the ground the lord formed every beast of the field oh you wonder who made things the tweety birds and the and the stars and the sun the moon he made all these things beast of the field and every fowl in the air and brought them unto to adam to see what adam would call them and whatever adam called every living creature that was the name let me ask you this morning have you ever called on the name that's above and beyond all names, the name of Jesus, to save you, to do a mighty work in your life, to change you? You see, you can't get over it once he has. And you know what? You're not perfect. It's a transformational process. It's an ongoing thing. But just as Paul said, you're going to run that race, and you're going to put out that chest, and you're going to try to bust that finish line. Amen? We're going to run with endurance. Number two, Jabez asked God to bless me indeed. Jabez must have known the covenant God. Amen. He must have known about Genesis 12. I'm sure it wasn't wrapped in cowhide and leather like mine is, but I'm going to tell you right now, he had the scrolls, he had the scripture, and you know what? He had them in his heart. He hid them behind his eyelids. He, he put them everywhere he could have it. He knew the word of God, and this is what he knew, that God had made a covenant, a declaration, and a promise to Abraham. Go out of your country, he says in chapter 12, verse 1. So go out from your country. Go out from your family and from your father's house. See, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to keep going. To a land that I will show you. I will make a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. If I'm making a mess down here, I'll continue. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And verse 4 says this, So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old. Oh my goodness. 75, and the Lord spoke, and you just picked up and went? Hallelujah, what a man. Hey, let me give you some other quick facts. At 100, you know what happened? He had a child. He didn't, but Sarah did. She was 90. And then 175, in case you're thinking and wanting to know, he gave up the ghost. He gave it all up. But that's what's happening. He was moving. Paul talks about that same blessing. He used, see, Old Testament brings in the New Testament, and this is what he says in Galatians 3, 8, and the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles. See, here's the deal. The gospel was brought to not only the Jews, but thank you, Lord Jesus, to the Gentile, that we can hear it, know it, and understand it, and we can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. So uh, here, here's where we're going. So in the Scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, because that's what it takes, forsaking all, I trust him, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing like Abraham. Jabez asked for a blessing and left the entirety up to God to decide what the blessing would be and how Jabez would receive it. See, we, we miss that in there. We miss that. He didn't say, hey, bless me with a Rolex, bless me with a fat bank account, bless me with financial gain and all that stuff. He just said, bless me. And you know what? He left it up to the Lord to identify and to give the blessing. Man, that's some of us today. We need to pray it. 
And then we need to just ask the Lord, hey, you fulfill it. It's your blessing that I know, because I know every good and good gift comes from where? Amen. Y'all are on it. Good job. All right, we're making a pile. Let's see if we finish that. Yep. All the families will be blessed. The Gentiles can be saved through faith. Boy, that's eating me up. I, I, I'm one of those neat freaks, and I hate stuff on the floor, but I'm going with it today. I'm going to just let it be, because you know what? We are messy people, and we serve a holy God. He'll clean up the mess. Let's keep moving. Another request by Jabez. Jabez asks for God to enlarge the territory. He won't want his territory enlarged. But here's the deal. He wasn't just saying, hey, give me more land that I can raise more sheep or more cattle. I want more. He wanted more ministry. He wanted to be around more people so he could do what? Share the good news. Chris, I know you, man. I've been around you. I bet that's your heart. Man, it's, God, it's not another financial gain. It's not something bigger. It's so I can bless other people with it. Yeah, do y'all know some people like that? I do. I know some really great folks like that that, 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 that they're, they're just praying, Lord, enlarge my territory. And you know what, Craig? God just keeps blessing them and blessing them and blessing them. And you know what they are? They're conduit. They're taking it in and they're giving it away. They're bringing it in and they're giving it away. Man, that's, that's to enrich your territory. Not for my name's sake and not for, for me to just grow and say, look at all the things that I have. You know, there was a guy in the Bible that said, hey, look, look, look at me. Man, I have a great harvest. We blew it up this year. The God just gave this. I'm gonna do, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to build bigger barns. That ain't why God gave it to you. God gave it to you to give it to other people, to bless others who are less fortunate. Bless those that need that blessing. Amen. And oh me if you don't. So that's where he was in, in, enlarging this uh, area. You know what conduit is? It's a channel of blessing. Isn't that good? It, it's, there's a hymn about it. Make me a channel of blessing. Make me a channel of blessing. I pray to be that channel of blessing. You have to be praying. You have to be asking. I'm going to keep moving. Number four. Jabez asked God with your hand that your hand be with me so let me just tell you this you know what that means dependency if he's asking your hand be with me he's not saying man look at all the stuff I got look at all the resources that are in that bank over there look at this over here all the things i got no it's being dependent every morning you get up just like jabez and say god may your hand be with me today as you open up my territory and expand my ways in the place that i can share jesus with other people may your hand be on me while i'm sharing jesus with others may your hand be with me let me ask you this this would be a, probably a pretty cool prayer that in, on your mirror, Annalise, in your, in your bathroom, because you spend a lot of time in there. You just put that prayer. That's a prayer that you could pray to God every day when you get up. Tape it on your Bible. Or here's something novel. Just have it. And, and, and just go to it every day. It's a really easy. First Corinthians, uh, Corinthians, Chronicles 4. Oh, Lord, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Your hand would be with me. He knew one thing, who to be dependent upon. Not self, not others, his God. So let me ask you, I want to lean so far. I'm going to go over here. Let me ask you this morning. What is your God? Because see, every one of you have one. It's either the God, I am, the one that Moses met, and Moses said, who are you? And he says, I am. It's either I am or anything else. Whatever you put ahead of, I am, that's your God. And, and so he has his priority right. His dependence is on God. Bless this. Dependence on God makes heroes out of ordinary people like Jabez. You call yourself, Chris, are you ordinary or are you extraordinary? I know, my bad. I should have used somebody else. Joshua, how about you? 
you ordinary guy going to school just being an ordinary guy you know what God can do with ordinary extraordinary how do I know that because of the word of God who I get into and read how about Noah wasn't Noah just an ordinary old boy but for 120 years he worked on an ark and while he was working on that ark who no one had ever seen rain before and he just was faithful he was dependent upon God he just kept building kept building and while he was building he was preaching he was trying to lead others to Christ ordinary turned extraordinary y'all know any other ones who okay apparently I can't do that because I can't hear <laughs> David Enoch Joshua David Jabez they're just ordinary people how about you do this put your name there man this is messing me up I gotta get away from it if seeking God's blessing is your ultimate act of worship and asking to do more for him is our greatest ambition then asking for God's hand upon us is our strategic choice to sustain and continue the great things that God has begun in our lives and here's the final I know you're waiting for it here's the final thing we're going to talk about after asking for asking for and receiving supernatural blessings influence and power Jabez was a wise man the enemy will come when you're doing it all for the glory of God mark that one thing down that I just said when you're doing the right thing the enemy will always come you know why he comes to steal kill and destroy when God's bringing life, when God's bringing blessing, when God's bringing his word, you know what? The devil can't stand it. So the enemy, if you're being attacked today and you're in the battle, let me just tell you, you're doing the right thing. Keep on keeping on. So here's the final thought. Here's what he says. Jobez, Jobez asked God, you will keep me from evil. You need to get up every morning, Soupy, and pray that one bless me enlarge my territory cry out to the god of israel call out to him pray seek him but i'm gonna tell you by the end of the day you better be saying keep me from evil keep me from it not just to sustain me in the hard times but to keep me from evil there's a difference in there to sustain you or to keep you from it jabez was experienced was experiencing much success he, he was seeing God do some great and mighty things and he could have said self it's enough I'm just going to coast for a while I'm just going to lean on my past blessings I'm going to lean in on the past things from the past but you know that wasn't Jabez and it shouldn't be us we want to see God do more and great and mighty things so he just kept praying Lord I know this success is around me. Billy Graham, one of the greatest evangelists of all times. Can we agree to that one? Billy Graham knew that you needed to have an accountability partner. That meant when he went out of town to go speak in a coliseum or where he was bringing the gospel and sharing, you know what? He had a couple dudes with him. And they were to keep him accountable. But when he was alone, and he, this is his account, when he got on an elevator and he was going down, let's say 15, 20 floors down on an elevator by himself, and a female got in, you know what Billy Graham would do? He would step out. See, that's keep me from evil. Keep me from it. Not to say, oh, I'm Billy Graham. I'm, I can endure that on my own. No, that's being wise. And that's what Solomon has given us a bit of wisdom right here. Jabez asked God, Keep me from this evil. Keep me from it. It's a great prayer for all of us to have. Amen. I encourage you, write this down. Hang it up somewhere where you can look at it every morning. Pray it. Seek God's will through it. Let me ask you something. See, we can be tempted by the devil, our flesh, and the world with its success. When was the last time you were tempted? 
think through that. Am I being tempted to grow my faith? Am I, I being, te- you know who te- tempts? Satan. You know who tests? Holy Spirit. Figure out which one of them spirits you're, you're living with and how they are conducting in your life and leading and guiding you. Keep me from evil. See, a lot of men fall into this trap. Oh, I'm spiritual. A lot of pastors have fallen by this one. Oh, I'm good. And they let it lead them down wrong roads and wrong places because they think that they've been with God and a lot of times when you are with God. But you know what? Keep me from evil. Don't put yourself in bad. Well, what was that? What's that saying, Christy? You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. You play stupid games, you, you get up next to those wrong things, and you know what? You'll win a stupid prize every time. And that ain't just for the youth. That's for, as Vody Bacham would say, everybody. Guard yourself with the Holy Spirit of God. Every day, put on the whole armor of God, Paul tells us. Many times we fall into temptation because we're not asking God to lead us away from it. I will make a difference. I will make prayer a priority. Amen. That's the only way we're going to fight off this. It's going to tie the bow on this I will message, I think. I'm going to try to anyway. I will move to being willing to be outwardly focused Christian because I am a praying Christian in that direction it's not in your notes you may just want to write some of these down we're going to finish I will serve I will pray and ask God where I can serve that's enlarge my territory right I will go because your hand will be with me I will not be a church dropout keep me from evil I won't be a church evil is what's going to lead us down that road I will not go down that road I will be thankful he prayed it bless me I will make a difference I'm calling on God in dependence I'm totally dependent on him so God granted him what he requested let's stand That's something we need to bring out of this. So God granted him what he requested. What have you asked God for lately? New car? I think I'm asking for a new truck, by the way. I got a broken light. I got some tore up stuff on my truck. You asking God to give you some lost folks? That's in larger territory. Lord, put some lost people in my path this week. Lord, I know it's Thanksgiving. Can I give a little bit of Thanksgiving to somebody else? Let's do this. Let's bow our head. We'll close our eyes. We're going to have a time of invitation. I want you to think about this. Why was he honorable? He didn't do any of it for selfish reasons. He was a selfless person. All the requests that he asked for. I don't know if you've missed it in here, but it was to benefit others. He wasn't asking God to benefit him, he wanted to benefit others. Let me ask you something. It's just between you and God. What is your life saying about you? Are you saying things with words or without words? Is your life speaking on your behalf without words? As it did here, more honorable. Let me ask you something. Let's just, no games for just a few minutes, okay? Have you ever made Jesus your Lord and Master? Have you ever asked Jesus to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, admit that you were a sinner and that He was the only one that could save you? You can't save yourself. Have you ever just laid it all out there and said, God, I trust in you and I trust in you alone? 
Lord, I've, I've got a lot of junk in my trunk. I've made a lot of mistakes in my past, but I know one thing. With your blood, you cover a multitude of sins. You can cover every one of those sins. Have you confessed that He is Lord? Believed in your heart that God raised Him from the dead? See, all these things, and it just says in Romans 10, 9, and 10 that you can be saved. So if you're wondering, can I be saved? Have I done too many things right, wrong, or indifferent? I don't know, but I know one thing. That's for you to work it out and allow the Holy Spirit to examine your life. And after a point of time of examination, whether that be today or, or later on today, but don't put it off too long. If the Holy Spirit of God's speaking to you, you need to find one of these guys and say, I'm lost. I, I need to know what it means to be saved. So we're going to give a time of invitation, a time of examining, a time of saying, hey, look, I, I want to be a, a, this church member you've talked about for all these six, seven weeks. I want to be that kind of church member. But I'm not a member here yet. How do I be a member? You walk down, you tell one of these guys, look, hey, I've been coming for quite some time and I didn't know what it looked like to be a member, but today I want to be a member. I want to be active and involved like you're talking about. Let me tell you this. You do business with the Lord, and I'll pray in a second. If you need to come, come. Come just as you are. And hear the Spirit call. Just as you are, come and see, come receive, come and live forever in life everlasting and strength. That's the only way you're going to come to Jesus. You just got to come as you are. Broken, messed up, however. We'll leave that up to God. I'm going to bless our food and I'll bless you. If you're a guest today and you said, man, I didn't know we were doing a Thanksgiving meal. We're doing a Thanksgiving meal. It's in here. I'm sure we got plenty. Come, eat, enjoy, have a time of fellowship. How about this? While you're sitting around your table, why don't you tell one thing that you're thankful for you know what I'm thankful for yeah it's usually you but man we got to spend the week with our grandbaby this week it was cool Andrew got to ride in the back with her I, I couldn't ride in the back I got car sick but man those are the greatest we need to take every one of these moments I was just looking at this little girl back here. She was crying just a second ago. Isn't that the greatest sound? That just means their life in those lungs. When you trust Jesus, you'll cry out to him. And there'll be breath in your lungs. Father God, <clears throat> bless our food. Make it a nourishment to our body. 
I love what Kirk says, make the sweets taste like broccoli or go down like broccoli or something like that with broccoli. Because that junk's nutritious. But God, thank you for everything you're doing here. Keep your hand on this body of believers. Keep encouraging us. Keep stirring us. Keep using us. Not for our name's sake, but for yours. And to God be the glory. Great things you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let the youth go first because they got to eat and get out of here. Is that okay? Hurry up, youth. Y'all go get your food.